Do you want to learn how to start and log in into SAP with YPath? I'm Marcel and on this tutorial we will learn how to create automation in YPath that will start the SAP logon and then we'll do the login into SAP. So to get started, let's first create a new project on YPath Studio. So I will click here on process and so I'll find here the name of the process. So it can be, for example, SAP underscore login. And now let's click here on create. So just before starting to create automation, we need to enable the SAP GUI scripting for YPath be able to automate SAP. So we need to enable the SAP GUI scripting on the client side and the server side. So to enable it, first let's log in into SAP. And let's start by enabling the SAP GUI scripting on the client side. So to enable it, let's click here on this button. And now let's click on options. And here uh, let's open the accessibility is scripting by doing double click. And now let's click on scripting. And here make sure that you enable the enable scripting option. So make sure that you check this option and then click here on OK to save. So now to enable the SAP GUI scripting on the server side, here let's input the following code, RZ11, and let's click on enter. And now here let's search for the parameter name SAP GUI underscore, uh, better, uh, slash user underscore scripting, like we can see here. And then let's click on display. So now here, let's click on change value on this button. So here we can see that I have enabled already the SAP GUI scripting on the server side. So here we can see true on your side, if it's false, so that means that it's disabled. And to enable it, let's input here on this field, the true value. And let's click here to save. So now that we have enabled SCP GUI scripting on the client and the server side, YPath will be able to interact to automate SAP. So uh, let's close here uh, SAP. And the first step uh, to log in into SAP is to start the SAP logon. So fortunately, YPath has a dedicated activity to start the SAP logon. So here on activities, let's search for the activity SAP logon. And here we can see the activity that will start the SAP logon and then will open the login page. So let's drag this activity to our project and as we can see, was automatically detected uh, the path of the executable to execute the SAP logon. So now we just need to provide a connection name. So uh, the connection name where then we want to log in into it. So here we can see my connection name. So I'll put it here inside the bulk quotes. And now let's see if it's working well. So let's see if it started the SAP logon and then it will appear the SAP login page. So let's run here our project. And as we can see, we got the exception, but we started the SAP logon. So here we can see uh, the message unable to connect to SAP script interface. Check if the correct executable is selected or try increasing the value of number of retries and or retry interval. 
So we know already that uh, executable is correct because we see SAP logon started. So that means that we might need to increase the number of retries or retry integral. So uh, let's stop here our project, our automation. And here on activity properties, we can see uh, here the retry interval and number of retries. So the number of retries, as it says here, is the time that the activity uh, is trying to connect to SAP scripting interface. So it's the time that it tries basically uh, to uh, connect to our connection to then open uh, the login page. And here we can see the retry interval between each retry. So as we can see, SAP logon takes some time to start. So it's better to increase here at least the retry interval in order to avoid the exception that we got. So let's use here a retry interval of uh, 2000 milliseconds. And let's run again our project. So let's close SAP logon and let's run again. As we can see, we started SAP logon and then we got here our login page. So as we can see now, at this time, we didn't get any exception. So after starting SAP logon and having here the SAP login page, we will do so the login into SAP. So also fortunately, WebPath has dedicated the activity to log in into SAP that makes this step uh, reliable comparing to use another methods like use a type into activity for each field and then do the login. So here on activities, let's search for the activity SAP login or we can see it already here. So it's this activity that will allow us to log in into SAP. So let's track this activity after the SAP logon activity. And first we must indicate uh, the screen, so the login page. So let's click here on indicate of screen. And now let's access uh, to the login page and let's indicate it. And now we must provide a client username, password and language to log in into SAP. So in my case, the client, it's 002. So let's indicate here inside the quotes. Then username, let's insert here our username inside the quotes. Now uh, let's provide the password to login. So let's click here on standard and I will provide it directly here. So I'll open the quotes and let's indicate the password. So we can test by this way easily only this activity. And now here, let's indicate the language. So in my case, it's uh, the English language. So let's indicate here inside double quotes. Then we can see here that we have different logon options. So we can continue with this logon and end any other logons. Or we can continue with this logon without ending the other ones or terminate this logon. So let's leave the one already selected and let's test. So now the login. So let's run from these activities. So let's do here a right click and click on test activity. And now let's click on continue and let's see here on SAP. So as we can see, was done the login successfully. So let's try now from the start. So starting from the SAP logon, the automation. So let's close here SAP and let's run again our project. And as you can see, we started SAP logon and then we done login into SAP. So if you liked this video, please give a thumbs up and now consider to subscribe to the channel so we'll get notified on each tutorial that I launch on the channel. 
Also, if you want to learn more about SAP automation with YPath, I leave here above a link to a video where uh, we learn a lot about automating SAP with YPath.